Hello and welcome to the Tech Mojo. Today in this video, we learn about how to execute code in Spring Boot application startup. Spring Boot offers multiple options for executing your code during the application startup. There are mainly three options. Option number one, using post constructor notation. Option number two, using application runner or command line runner. Option number three, using Spring Boot events. So in this video, we will cover all the three options and look into the best practices, do's and don'ts. Now let's jump straight into the option number one. The option number one is the post constructor annotation. The post constructor annotation can be used within a method to indicate Spring that this method should be executed after the bean is initialized. You can use the post constructor annotation in your Spring Boot application main class or you can also do it within your component or service. Now, to keep it simple, let's do it within my application main class. Now, to do that, let me first create a public void run. This is a method I'm creating here. And within the method, I'm going to put some log statement, uh, log.info. And within log.info, I'm just putting the name of my class and method. Okay, so I don't have any complex business logic here, but if you have, then you can put your logic right here. Now, this is just a simple method, but let's annotate that with, with post-construct annotation. Okay, so now that we have added post-construct annotation, the Spring Boot application will now understand and it will run this, uh, run this method right after uh, the Spring Boot is initialized. Now, let's run this and see. Okay, so as you see now, my uh, in the log you can notice one thing that my application run is logging here. But one thing to note here though is this method is executed uh, right after the Spring context is initialized. Uh, so please note one thing here in this code that I'm using for logging purpose. I'm using SLF4j. SLF4j is basically a package available within the Lombok. Uh, I'm using Lombok because it's easy for me to demonstrate here. But uh, if you don't prefer Lombok, you can use your regular uh, logger framework. Now, the post construct annotation is mainly used to complete some sort of initialization task, and this is, uh, you, you know, this is a part of Spring Boot lifecycle method. And uh, you can use to execute. You can use it to execute certain code, but it's not preferable to use for any long-running uh, task. Okay, so there are for long-running tasks there are option two and option three which you can use. Now, with that, let's go to option two. The option number two is using application runner or command line runner. Both application runner and command line runner is a recommended method if you have to execute some code after the initialization of the Spring Boot application. Both of these options, both of these interfaces are basically provides a method called run method. And this method is called after the Spring context is initialized. Now let's see how to implement it. To implement it, we could do right here, we could, uh, we can, we could implement command line runner to my main application but this will be complicating the things here. Let's move that logic into a different class. Now let me create a class called app runner. And in the app runner class, first thing we do is we want to have logging here. And for that, I need to add SLF4j again from the Lombok package. Now we also want to mark it as a component annotation. So that Spring Boot knows that it has to be it has to initialize that context. Now, once you do that, you also need to implement the command line runner. Now, because the command line runner is an interface, you have to provide the implementation for the run method. Notice one thing, the run method here is passing a bunch of arguments and they are of string format. Now let's go back, uh, let's print here. Let's print the uh, log statement here, log.info uh, and I'm saying app runner run. Now let's run and see how it works. Okay, so as you can see, first it executes 
the post construct annotation and later it execute your app runner okay now let's say so this is command line runner interface but what about application runner the application runner is no different from command line runner interface but there is one difference though the application runner has a run method which pass different set of arguments it has application arguments rather than array of strings but other than that that difference there is really nothing else different they pretty much work the same way now i have removed the command line runner and added the application runner interface now once you implement the applic application runner let's run it and see there shouldn't be any difference in terms of the order of execution okay still execute the same same way as your command line runner now what happens when you have to uh, you have to do multiple tasks multiple tasks for uh, when your spring boot application is initialized for example you want to have uh, initialize certain configurations and then you want to do something else and then you want to do something else right there are multiple things you want to do step by step approach now if you have to do that in spring boot there are many options but if you want to use application runner for that purpose then all you need to do is you need to create another class uh, let's say i call it as application runner 2 and do the same thing and let's change the log statement so we know the difference uh, let's keep this side by side okay the application runner and application runner 2 there is no difference really between these two you uh, the reason i'm creating is because you might want to run multiple things and separate them out into two different classes now once you run it the most both must be printed on your logs okay now one thing to notice here it first started the application runner then secondly it is starting application runner 2 however spring boot does not guarantee that this is how it will be executed at all the time okay so the order of the execution for the different application runner is never preserved by spring boot it's not guaranteed that it is always going to be in this order now if you want that order to be preserved then you could do you could do that with order annotation now to make make that it is working let me uh, let's say app runner should execute in the second order but app runner 2 will execute in the first order okay now app runner 2 should execute before app runner let's run that and see okay now you see in the logs application runner 2 started before the app runner so this is how you preserve the order of your uh, application runners if you have multiple application runners within your spring boot application now with this we are done with option 2 let's go to the option 3 the option 3 is spring boot events the spring boot application provides number of events uh, and they are published during the application life cycle we can register or listen for uh, for one of the spring events to execute our code when your application is ready and to do that let me create another class and uh, call that class application start event i mean you can give any name really you want but uh, i just kept it application start event now the same thing here let's do that uh, with the lombok uh, slf4j annotation and also mark it as component okay now in application start event it is basically a, a, like any other component class but within this let's create a method called public oops not this one Pub, public void uh, and let's say um, application ready or on ready i mean any name it can be possible but yeah on ready event this is my own method this is my own name right so you can name anything really you want now we need to tell spring somehow that this event should be executed on on the application ready event and to do that 
first thing we do is we need to register this event by using event listener oops event listener annotation and you also need to specify which event you want want to be notified now in this case we will say application ready event now what it means is when application is ready when spring boot application is ready spring boot lifecycle method will kind of notify you uh, when they are ready now let's do the same thing here let's print it in the log log.info and i'm doing the same thing okay now let's run this thing okay now you see uh, the order is uh, first post constructor annotation then application runner and then you have uh, sorry command line runner or application runner and then you have your event now what happens if i use post construct on a component let's check that as well now i'm using a another class called let's say my my component something i mean anything really you can give Uh, okay, so let me create a component class called my component and mark it as component annotation. Again, we will use SLF4J for the logging purpose. Now, within this, let's copy copy the code which is right here and put that in your component. Okay, but uh, let's change the log so I clearly differentiate between my application run method and the run method from my component. Now let's run this. Okay, so now you see again, first my application started, then my component annotated with post construct, and then my command line runner or my application runner, and then you have your events. So now, in my opinion, you should always use the option number two and option number three for any long running task any long running service for example reading files or maybe talking to a network to call you can get your configurations uh, all that those sort of things anyway you have multiple options and you choose which is uh, which works best for you uh, and we have seen all the three options in action uh, that is for today and if you like this video please subscribe to my channel for more such things and uh, see you in the next one